Okay, let's talk about some of the selector levers up here. They're labeled with a Roman numeral one, one Roman numeral two, and Roman numeral three. This top one is used to select between G or C, and if you're on the G setting, you're going to be knitting in a stitch pattern designed for the garter carriage, or doing ribbing or something along those lines. And if you've switched it to C, then you're casting on or casting off. So C is for cast on, cast off. This selection lever down here is to choose between continuous knitting, knitting back and forth, back and forth if it's on this setting, or just finishing whichever row you're on and going across once and then stopping. Now if you're on this continuous knit, knitting setting, then you want to come down here and set um, the number of rows that you want to do, and it will count down until it gets to zero. When it gets to zero, it will quit the continuous knitting, unless it encounters a problem in the meantime. This lever with the Roman numeral three is called the change direction lever. And um, it's pretty clear what it does, but if it's over in this position, you're going to knit from right to left. If it's in this position, you're going to knit from left to right. Uh, down here at the bottom though, you'll notice that um, there's a little curly Q or what that stands for is an E-wrap and this is the position that this lever would be in for casting on. Actually all of these levers would be over to that side for casting on. Now this change direction lever works in conjunction with um, the row counter. So every time this is flipped, this will decrease um, by row count one. Uh, you might even be able to see it there. Um, we were on 990, we're on 994 there, goes down to 993. If you're using that in conjunction with this automatic um, uh, knitting setting where it's just going back and forth, back and forth, um, you'll see that uh, this will move automatically too, depending on which direction the carriage is going. The tension dial down here um, works a little different than the one on the main carriage, and they actually provide a chart in the manual um, that gives some guidance as to what settings you want, whether you're doing cast on and rib, or if you're in stitch pattern, and then the size of the yarn. So follow what's in the manual there, and you'll note down below that it does say that fancy yarns, yarns with very little stretch, etc., may be more difficult to knit with. Garter carriages come with um, these G point cams, and they come as one point, two point, or three point, and what that stands for is one needle, two needles, or three needles. And uh, what these are used to do is you put them on your edge needles if you want the garter carriage to um, reverse what it's doing to those needles. So you actually don't. Okay, setting the garter carriage up to use it, um, First thing you'll notice is there's this attachment here that will go onto um, your mast in order to um, trap for knots and um, for whether or not you've run out of yarn. And this section, this little piece right in here, actually snaps up onto your mast. Um, if you're set up for this garter carriage, it would go into that hole right there and just snap in. Um, this curly cube cord will come down here and uh, plug right into the garter carriage there. Um, your yarn needs to come around uh, to the back here and there are different size slots on the back for different size yarn so you'd want to put it in the appropriate slot. And then up on this side um, you want to loop the yarn down underneath this so it can tell if you've run out of yarn or not. Um, let me slide this in back here. If I can do it one-handed. Okay, so then we're set up there. Uh, you want to install your rails. Uh, in order to get the garter carriage going on the machine, you'll set it onto the rails 
and then you'll slide it over to the edge just outside the turnaround mark. Um, and then I think you can see that when it's installed, this back here um, will go over the this back rail. One more thing, uh, th this is the power supply for the garter carriage and you can see that it just slides onto the, this uh, little plastic thing on the back. This is where you can adjust the speed of the garter carriage. Um, I'm, I can't even tell exactly where this one's set right now, um, but there is no fast speed. Just beware of that. It's slow no matter what, but you can change the speed. When you set it up, when you thread it up with the yarn, the yarn will go in here, and you want to pull on it top to bottom, make sure that it, it uh, flows freely, freely through that spot. Um, once you've got the yarn in there, uh, close that so that the yarn cannot come out. Um, if you need to check the needle, you might want to do this when it's off the machine, but you can push this button in, open that. This little white thing here is your needle. I think you can see it moving up there where my finger is. Um, and to get that out, you'll tip this black thing back and pull this out. If you're going to be doing a lot of work um, with the garter carriage or you haven't used it, you might want to put just a little bit of oil on that latch there. Make sure that it's closing and opening all the way and not sprung um, and that, uh, yeah, it just doesn't seem bent or anything. To put that in, you slide it back in to um, the tube here and this piece is over to the right and then you just pull pull this down. There's also, I probably should have done this first, there's also this little um, like presser plate, I think they call it, that you pull out of the way. Um, and then put it back in place before you're going to use it and then close this up again. So let's do a cast on. Um, first thing, um, I would highly recommend getting your manual out and following it. When you cast on and cast off, you always need the G carriage over to the right of the machine and you need to be outside this right hand turn mark. You cannot you can only cast on or cast off if you're going from right to left. So make sure that you're outside of this turn mark here. Next, check, push this memo button. Um, the, what the memo button does is make sure that it's going to cast on to all needles, not just the ones that would be your white squares in your pattern, because um, normally that's the one that it would cast on to. But when you've pushed that memo button, then it will cast on to all of them. Also, let me draw attention to um, over here, there's a little lamp marked with a G. Yours may appear slightly different depending on your machine, but that lamp is not on. The, the light above it is, but that lamp is not on yet. Um, but it will come on later. So you want to pull out the needles that you're going to knit on. Um, I've got some needles pulled out over here. Um, make sure we're outside that turn mark and I'm going to move the G carriage over by holding this gray part down and then lifting the rest of the carriage and you can see I think maybe that it's engaging the belt back here and all of a sudden this red lamp here came on it now knows that it's working with the G carriage but I'm going to keep moving that all the way over until I get next to um, the needles that I want to start knitting on and then just wiggle it around a little until you can get it go down make sure that the yarn is moving freely in um, In the yarn holder here and we aren't caught on a gate peg because we were lifting that up Also, make sure you're set for cast on that you're only going to do the one row and that this is set to um, the cast on uh, setting here this lever number three set this to do one row here and then we'll hit start and what it will do is e-wrap cast on on each of the needles that are selected
Now the G carriage is going to go past those needles and what I'm watching for over on this side is that I've cleared um, the last selected needle. So it, it's one reason it's so slow. But you can see the selected needles are just coming out there. We've got um, an E-wrap cast on on each of the needles down here. We are still not past the selected needles. But that's what I'm watching for there. It will not stop itself. So once we get over there, then I have to hit the stop. Then I'm going to pick up the G carriage and I'm going to slide it out of the way so that I can install a cast on comb onto all of these needles that we've knit on. Oops. I'm unwrapping an e wrap, so let me fix that manually. I want to bring the yarn through the cast on comb. The manual specifically says that the, um, the cast on comb hooks should be facing towards the machine and away from you. I think those hooks could potentially catch the G carriage, so you, you don't want it facing you if you sometimes do that. Okay, so we are cast on now, and um, now we need to go back the other direction. I'm probably going to increase my tension slightly. I did that one at a three. I'm going to increase my number of rows to say five. I'm going to switch to G. Let me bring this back into view here. So I'm bringing this just up to the beginning of the selected needles. I'm making sure my yarn is not caught and kind of wiggling it till it sets down. I think it needs to get positioned on the needles properly. But I'm gonna sweat, switch uh, uh, lever number one to G. Um, lever number two, I'm gonna switch to automatic. Um, I do wanna be going that direction, so I'm gonna leave that like it is. I've set this to five. Um, and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to program in a ribbing number. Let's do a two by one rib, and that would be um, 533. Okay, let's take memo off, sorry, because we, we want it to. And then we're going to step, clear, step, clear, 533, step, step. Okay, ready to go there. And we can put some of the uh, garter carriage cams on here so that it will deal with those edge needles differently. So I'm going to use two stitch cams and install them on each edge. Push them to the back. I kind of have to push them in to get them to go down there, squeeze the two little tips together to get them to insert properly. Um, so I've got this moved up. I'm going to put a little bit of weight on my, my cast on comb. And let me just check with the manual here, and I think we are ready to go. I've set this for five rows of ribbing. Normally, we'd probably do a little bit more, um, but I don't want to bore you to death, so. Or I will do a few more rows off camera for you. We're still working on the ribbing.
think you can see the ribbings coming along just fine. Okay, after completing the ribbing, I decided I was going to set it up to do this stitch number 468. Um, this is the Stitch World book that comes with the machine. And up here at the top, um, it talks about patterns for automatic knitting carriage. So um, that's page 112 through, let's see, through, um, yeah, 121. Um, but these are some of the different patterns that you can use. Also, in Stitch World, for a little further back, it has another section called Original Patterns for G Carriage. And this is page 126 through uh, 130. And um, these patterns will also work. Um, but this is where you're going to find some of your ribbing. So we did we did this uh, two by one industrial rib before. So I'm going to do about I don't know 20 rows of that. Um, just I don't have to make any other changes other than change the stitch pattern in the machine itself and set the carriage to go, and um, then we'll get our uh, then we'll go into a cast off. Okay, so I finished the pattern that I programmed. And the carriage automatically stopped. And let me take the camera out so you can kind of see what we have, minus some slop. You just have to ignore some sloppy things on my part. But this is what we've got on here so far. We had a couple stitches that weren't caught in the comb over there. That's an important point that you want that cast on comb to hold all of your stitches down before you start. So I've put another thing on there. And then I got a loop over here. But besides that, um, it's done a repeat of the pattern and um, I'm going to have it do one more row back to the right and then we will go through casting off. Remember that you can only cast on or cast off going from right to left so I need to get the carriage, the garter carriage back over to the other side. Okay, we're going to get ready to cast off. First thing we need to do is we need to power off the, the knitting machine. We don't want um, any of the electronics in the knitting machine to control what the garter carriage is doing. The next thing we need to do is um, remove our point cams. And I've got to lift this slightly to get under there. Okay. And then um, we need to, and I'm going to show you this in the manual because you can probably see it better there than what I'm doing on the thing, but we need to lift some of the um, stitches from a, like a row below and put them up on the gate pegs on both sides. The reason for that is, is what, we don't want it to drop off the machine as it casts it off. We want it held on there. So I'm going to do that and um, pause the camera and I'll come back when I've got that okay. done. I've hung a stitch from uh, the row below up onto the gate peg, not on the needles, but on the gate pegs. And um, then if this was really long, we would want to move uh, the cast on comb up to make sure we had good weight on all these stitches so it could cast them off. I don't think the short length that I've made here is going to make a difference, so I'm not going to do that. Um, it does say to take off the claw weights, though, uh, so I will do that. Um, and then we want to configure the carriage. Let me make sure you can see. We want to um, take both of those levers over, and we want this lever going from right to left again. We want to set the row counter to one, because we're going to do one cast on row. Um, we've got the machine turned off, so it will not be controlling any patterning or anything with the garter carriage. And um, then we just press start. So we'll take a second here. I'm just going to hold this so it's got more balance. I think you can hear the different sound. And like last time, we're going to wait for the garter carriage to um, clear the last stitches um, or last needles that are in working position. 
and it will not stop itself so I will push the stop at when we've cleared the last needles there so okay now I think maybe if I reposition the camera you can see how this is um, basically detached from the machine there you might also be able to see that we've got a couple different loops here um, I found it easiest to go ahead and take my yarn out from the garter carriage and what you've got to do so you can see my loose yarn here but I've got one loop here that's all the way up around the garter carriage needle and if I take my latchet tool um, I can hook that off I don't think I can show it very well on camera but okay got the loop off the garter carriage needle there and um, I'll just cut my thread my yarn up top and run this end through my loop and remove it from the machine take it off the cast on comb and that's what we knit um, I think it's a decent ooh, it looks like we missed a stitch there but a decent cast off um, notice how it's not um, pulling it in at the top or anything so pretty decent cast off you could always do it by hand as well I think over on the right side here you can see how much wider this section should have been if it would continued in pattern but because we had the G point cam installed behind those two needles I think you can see how it reversed them and um, we've got a nice edge all the way up um, we have a nice two by one rib there on the bottom we have a very nice e-wrap cast on so um, it and it worked pretty flawlessly except for some of my mistakes here so 